Okay, let's get started. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this online easy build tutorial. We're very happy to have many people register for this tutorial, and we hope everything works out well, and this is very useful for you. We'll get started with some practical information for the next couple of hours. So first of all, I would like to thank everybody who helped out with organizing this tutorial. Uh, Maxime, Christian, Alan, Oke, and myself are actively here. And Marcus was instrumental with um, making the proposal, for, the original proposal for ISC. And we also got some additional help from Michael, Terrier, and Miguel. So thank you very much for everybody who has contributed to the tutorial in one way or another. A little bit of background before we get started. This tutorial was proposed for the ISC conference, which was supposed to happen this week and was accepted there. But due to the ongoing situation, um, the tutorials have been postponed until next year. And we figured since the tutorial was accepted that we could um, go through with it in an online format um, and still make it useful to, uh, to people. So hopefully that works out well. We're very happy to get very good attendance for this tutorial. Uh, we had 101 registrations, not including some of the people um, helping out with the tutorial. So that's mostly new people. Um, across a whole range of countries, 15 different countries. And we have 16 people from, um, in total, seven different companies as well. So we're very, very happy with uh, this kind of attendance. Here's the agenda, just quickly. The times we're showing here are universal coordinated time. So keep that in mind uh, with your local time zone. So we'll get started with this welcome and some practical information, a general introduction to EasyBuild. Then we'll do installation and configuration, which includes some hands-on work. Um, we'll continue with basic usage and actually installing software with EasyBuild, which also includes hands-on. Then we'll have a quick break some coffee or bio break. We'll continue with some troubleshooting of installations. We'll look at hierarchical model naming schemes, which actually also includes a little bit of hands-on. Um, we'll look at how to add support for additional software, which includes a fair amount of hands-on as well. Then we'll have another short break. And we'll move on to looking at how EasyBuild is used at the ULIC Supercomputing Center in Germany and at Compute Canada. Uh, we'll look at how you can contribute back to EasyBuild. We'll do a quick comparison with other tools and we'll wrap up with some information on how you can get help with EasyBuild and any further questions that there may be at the end. So we'll, we're gonna try and take some time for questions um, in between as well, roughly after each part, um, but we'll see how fluent we are in terms of time, um, if we'll have enough time for actually doing that. Some practical information, you've received all of this via email as well. So the event page here has all the links, this wiki page. Um, so you don't have to type over any of these links. You can just click on them through the event page. These slides are available in PDF format in the EasyBuild tutorial repository. Um, the tutorial site itself is behind this link and looks something like this. So if you click this, um, this is the tutorial website, which again has the YouTube live stream. Um, and we'll get back to this in a second. The streaming, as you know, is through YouTube, through the Easy Builders channel. Um, and we are recording um, this session as well. And we, make it, we will make it shortly available um, after the live tutorial. Then for the Slack channel, I hope all of you have joined the tutorial channel in the EasyBuild Slack by now. Um, I see many people already there, so that's very good. We do ask that if you have any questions, you can ask them in, the, in this tutorial channel. Uh, but to follow up on questions, please start a thread in Slack. So don't just post in the tutorial channel directly, but try to keep things organized in threads, uh, which will make things a bit more manageable. There's multiple people in the tutorial channel that will help you if you have any questions. So feel free to ask questions as they, um, as they come up. Also for Slack, we will do um, regular polls in the Slack channel. For this, we will 
um, use emojis because that's a bit funny and useful and quite easy to do as well. So you will, we will post a question. Um, we will give a range of answers and each of the answers will have an emoji corresponding to it. And then you can vote for the corresponding emojis for which answer or answers you want to uh, apply to. We have a prepared environment for you that will be very useful for the hands-on uh, during this tutorial. Uh, it consists of a Docker container image, which we have built with a bunch of software pre-installed in it to make the exercises a bit more feasible. Um, you can run it either through Docker directly or through Singularity. And this is this will be covered in the practical or this is covered in the practical information in the tutorial. Um, the container image contains a pretty bare CentOS 7.8 with Elmot 8 already pre-installed. Um, we have a pre-installed software stack in the slash easy build uh, directory in the root of the file system. And we strongly recommend you to use Python 3 to run easy build and we will show you how to do that. We also have resources available in, in the AWS Cloud 9 environment. And Christian will now give an overview of how um, to access this. So for this, you should use the login URL you received via email in the second email. So the, the, log, the URL in the first email is not valid. Please use the one you got in the second email. So I'll give the floor now to Christian, who will show us how to get uh, things set up in AWS. All right, cool. Yeah, thanks, Kenneth. Let me share my screen and sh let me share the correct one. Yeah, the, uh, I'm sorry about the, the link that we needed to resend because I screwed something up. So sorry for that. So it's not Kenneth's fault. Um, you should have this link uh, with the hash. And uh, when, you, when you click on it, you will get to this page here. So it will log in Christian, automatically. I still have no sound from you. One, two, three. Ah, no, sorry, no. that's my fault. Go on. OK. So you will see this, this dashboard here. And we just go straight to the AWS console. So just click this AWS console uh, button, then click here. You can ignore the rest and just go here. And this will just log in to a dedicated account on AWS for this session for each of the attendees. And eventually it will appear. And this is a training account, so you can do potentially what you want, but in this case, we want to go to Cloud9. So if you go find services and you type Cloud9, then you will go to this dashboard of Cloud9. And we have prepared an environment already. So you should see the next slow workshop environment. And again, we had a little mess up, so I didn't rename it, but I think you can still use it. Um, so just, if you go here, if you are here, then just open IDE, and then we are already at the end of my practical information piece. This will start an EC2 instance with a resized um, EBS volume. So your root volume will be 100 gigabytes so that we can install whatever we like. It has a two vCPU and four gigabyte of RAM instance behind it. Not super powerful, but powerful enough for this occasion, I think. And that's about it. So let me wait until I connect and then I show you some two tricks that you want, might want to do. So now you will have this dark theme and I personally, I don't like the dark theme. So let me change it to a more lighter one. So you go here and you have this light scheme. It's pretty nice. There is a terminal already in the bottom, but you can create a new terminal at the top. That's what I prefer to do as well. And then close this window as this welcoming piece. And here we go. So you have your EC2 instance. There is an um, editor for text files here at, at the left-hand side as well. That's, I think, something that uh, Kenneth will use as well. But yeah, uh, that's about it. So just again, to recap, you log in with your login um, and the hash. Then you go to AWS console, click AWS console again. This will forward you to the right region and uh, the right console. 
and Chris yeah, well, I just restarted, right? So here we go. Here we go. We are in the management console landing page. Just type Cloud9 here. A little bit slower, okay. So everyone got to the management console. And I can do this. I will do this over and over, like for two minutes or so, and then we can just follow. So go to Cloud9. You will see an already an environment created. Just open IDE. That will forward you to the Cloud9 IDE. And since I initialized it an hour ago, it's uh, most likely be stopped. So it needs to start up, which takes like two minutes. And then you are at the same, uh, at, the, at the console. You can change the seam of the console just here. Go to the uh, preferences icon here on the right top. Go to themes and then choose the seam that you like. I personally like the light one, but it's up to you. And that's it. I will restart once more so that people can follow. And that's a cool thing, by the way. So if your browser crashes, your Wi-Fi goes down, you will still be uh, going to the same exact terminal and the same exact IDE. So if something goes wrong, you will you will go back to where you where you left off. Okay. So again, copy in your your login URL. This will forward you directly to your team dashboard, click AWS console once, twice. This will forward you to the AWS management console. Within the console, just go to find services and type in cloud nine, click on cloud nine. This will forward you to the dashboard of cloud nine with one environment already prepared for you. It's called NextFlow Workshop, but please ignore NextFlow and uh, magically replace it with EasyBuild. Here we go. Open IDE, and this will point you to the Cloud9 environment. Again, the theme you can change on the right hand, on the top right, just go themes and change it and create a new terminal on the top. So you can create a terminal like this, you can have multiple terminals, you can create file, up to you. And that's about it. You can also increase the font here if you like, and that's something that, um, that Kenneth did, but within here you have the font size you can increase as well if it's too small, but yeah, that's basically it. And if you have questions, if you are stuck somewhere, feel free to ping me on, on, on Slack. I'm happy to help and make everyone like work on the Cloud9 environment we provide. So don't be shy. Kenneth, back to you. Thank you very much, Christian. So mine is still initializing, but hopefully everybody now has the AWS environment set up and ready to go. I will also make this a little bit more nicer to look at. So I will change the theme to the white theme and I will increase the font size quite a bit. I'll make this 18 in my my case and there's another one here and close this close this hide this and open a new terminal and close these two as well okay
So let's get back to the presentation. Um, I think Christian did a very good job at showing how to set up um, the AWS environment. The slides have a couple of screenshots for you. So open AWS console twice, um, open the Cloud9 environment, then you see this, and then the open IDE is actually the next step after this one. And then you can start a new terminal session. That's good enough for now, and we'll look at the practical info in a bit, um, what we will do there. So the idea is that we will run the Docker container image in this environment, which gives us a bunch of software pre-installed and ready to go. You don't have to um, type over this command for sure. You can copy paste it from the tutorial page. So here, if you go to practical information, and you click the using Docker section, you can copy paste the commands here. So the first one just creates a directory that will be mounted in the container and we will run the Easy Builders tutorial container that was tagged for ISC 20. Note the copy uh, button here. So if you click this, you will actually copy the contents of this box. And then you can go back to the AWS terminal and just paste it there. So it has done the creating of the directory here, which you can see on the left as well. If you look at the available directories you have, and then we can run the Docker container. So it will tell you the Docker container is not available yet locally. It will start downloading it. And shortly after um, it will open the tutorial image for you. For people who do not want to use or can use Docker, they can also use Singularity instead, which is also covered in the practical information page in the tutorial. Um, it looks very similar. So again, we create a directory first and then we use Singularity Run. We make sure we're in a clean environment that we're not using the home directory of the host, but a, a new home directory, an empty one. So we don't pick up anything uh, that we don't want in the container image and we tell it to use this Docker container as well. There's one small caveat here. Um, when using Singularity, there's one of the exercises and examples that will not work when using um, Singularity. So when we hit the hierarchical module naming scheme um, part of the tutorial, the, those exercises will not work there. And we'll mention uh, that when we get to that part of the tutorial, what the issue is there. In Docker, everything should work fine. Let me check again. Um, once all the downloading here is done, it will fire up the tutorial uh, image for you. And you should see a welcome message that has a banner like this showing easy build um, and some information about the tutorial. If you have this, then you're all set for the hands-on exercises that we will walk through uh, during the tutorial. So here is a small recommend recommendation in terms of screen setup. Um, this is mostly for people who only have a single screen. If you have two screens, um, that's, this is less of an issue. But you should keep an eye on the YouTube live stream, which I have here on the top right. Um, you should have your terminal in AWS open, which I did here on the bottom right. And then ideally, you also have the tutorial site open, which I have here on the left, so you can scroll through it and copy paste uh, any commands that you may want to execute in the terminal. And of course, then there's Slack as well. So maybe you can switch on the left between Slack and the tutorial uh, website. This is just some recommendations, um, since there's a lot of things to keep an eye on during the tutorial. The tutorial website itself, which I already showed, has a hamburger menu here on the left. Um, which you can click on to get an overview of the tutorial, the different sections. And for each of these subsections, there is an, a sub menu, which is again a small hamburger menu that you can click to see um, the different sections in that particular part of the tutorial. And again, please use the copy button in the code snippets that will save you a lot of time in not making silly typos in the commands that you can run. Okay, we're now ready to start the general introduction to EasyBuild. 
So this is the first part of the tutorial, which is um, on the tutorial site. Let me show that here. So once you have the welcome message in the Docker container, you don't need the practical information part of the tutorial anymore. And we can jump to the introduction section, which is this part. 